Hello fellow gamers, Peter here from the Esoteric Order of Gamers. Welcome! Today we're going to talk about Death Gorge. Yes, it's the latest season of Warhammer Underworlds. I think it's the ninth season. Seems insane, but it seems like to me this is a really new game, but it's been a while, around for a while now. This is the latest season. Comes with some very nice miniatures. They're over here and I've painted them, so I'm going to show them to fully painted I know. Well, this is why this video is so late, because I've had to paint the miniatures. Um, so I can show you these miniatures in all their glory and tell you a little bit about uh, Warhammer Underworld's Death Gorge. Now, of course, let me say first that I got this for free. Games Workshop sent it to me so I could show it off to you. But as always, my opinions are always my own. I don't charge for these videos. So what do you get inside Warhammer Underworld's Death Gorge? Well, you get the usual stuff. I mean, if you've played a few seasons of Warhammer Underworlds now, you kind of know the drill now. It comes with a big rule book. Now, the first thing I'm going to say is this rule book's crap. Yes. <laughs> there you go. A strong opinion for me. I think it's overwritten, overwordy, too complex. And also the way it's laid out, it has all these little pull-out boxes called advanced rules. And this way of doing things kind of really annoys me because they're not really advanced rules. They're rules. I mean, none of them are kind of optional. They're all important rules and part of the thing. I don't know why they've called them advanced rules. If they'd laid the whole thing out in a nice flow from go to woe, telling you the rules, without breaking it all up into all these different little boxes, some of them labelled with advanced rules and some of them not, it'd all be a lot easier. It's very overly complex. And I found this more and more lately with Games Workshop rules. I don't know what they're doing when it comes to rule writing. They're too wordy and uh, too padded out. I don't know why. They've just got to be more succinct. Now, of course, this is a kind of tournament game as well. It's a deck building game as well as a miniature combat game. It's played in tournaments, so they do have to be precise. And I do understand that. But I think that sometimes in their uh, effort to be precise, they overcook the pot and just put too many words in there. And I think it would be a lot more precise if they made it more succinct. Um, but what would I know? I've only done 450 rules, summaries and reference sheets, so I have no experience in these matters at all. Anyway, apart from that, as you can see, big rule book. It's got a whole lot of background information about the Death Gorge, where this game is set. Now, the Death Gorge, which sounds like something that happens to you when you have too many large curries and beers, is a chasm in the uh, land of Gur, the land of beasts. Now, we haven't seen frozen chasms in Gur before, but here they are, apparently. And not only are they frozen and horrific, but also souls have been frozen into the walls of the chasm. And there are giant worm things going around down there. And, and there's like some huge mammoth god worm beast as well that's leaving artifacts lying around everywhere covered with its own slime. It's weird. It's very weird. But what the hell, it's just another place to set battles. And even though this is a very frozen setting, we have, well, some strange kind of warbands, some interesting warbands. There are two of them, and they're made up of... Oh, well, I'm getting ahead of myself a bit. Let me just show you a few more things in the box before I get into them. Basically, they're Slanesh and Ideneth. Is it Ideneth or Ideneth? Ideneth Deep King. Deep Akin which I saw referred to in an article as the Damp Elves, and I thought that was quite hilarious. So, uh, we'll show you the warbands in a sec, but you do get two boards, which is pretty cool, and they're both double-sided, so there's a lot there to enjoy board-wise. There you go, there's one side, and another. Lovely art. Here's the other one. Now, of course, you use two boards in a game, um, but you've got the double sides to choose from. So, lovely boards. They do really nice boards in, in this game. Then you've got a whole heap of hex tiles and scatter tile type things. These ones here. You've got your lovely custom dice, which are really nice. Um, and then your sort of your usual counters for, for wounds and special effects and uh, your glory points, which of course you're going for. You win in this game by getting glory points. Again, always makes me think of something else, but we won't go into that. Um, I mean, if you're trying to get glory points in the Death Gorge, are you then sort of going down a glory hole? 
No, we won't go there. Um, then we've got some other counters here, heaps of counters, and of course the special counters for, you know, charging and things like that. But of course, the most important thing are your decks. Now, as you can see, I've taken these out and I've put them uh, in Ziploc bags. This isn't how it comes in the game. It all looks prettier when you open the box. The good thing about this, of course, is that it comes with Rivals decks, and I love the Rivals decks idea, because when I got my first set of Warhammer Underworlds, it was pretty much, well, they were sort of starter decks, but it was kind of assumed that you got into it, played the game, and then very quickly started doing deck building. Now, because I flit around from so many different games to other games, I don't have a lot of time to really concentrate on Warhammer Underworlds and finely tune my deck, and I certainly don't play it regularly enough to do that. So the Rivals decks are great. Uh, they're ready to go straight out of the box, and you can play some great games with the Rivals decks. And then... Later on, if you want to, you can do a little bit of deck building with the extra ones. There's a deck called Force of Frost, and there's one called um, something else that I forgot the name of, Breakneck Slaughter. So you can put in cards from those special decks. Now, tell me more about the warbands, so I hear you ask. So you have two warbands. Now, one of them are three Slash Slanesh Demons, Slash Slanesh Demons, really nasty looking weird looking people and they are called the thrice fold discord here are their cards here they're made up of vashtish the coiled um less lasciver it's obviously lascivious yeah lasciver the bladed blessing vexmore um that's all there's only three of them um but they're very interesting characters now i really like this warband it's very interesting um if you look at the figures of course they're the Typical Games Workshop, totally over-the-top Slanesh type characters with lots of fiddly bits that you can prick your fingers on and break off if you're not careful. They're quite fiddly to make, so be careful when you're putting them together. But the good thing about this particular warband is that they all hate each other, <laughs> which is excellent and just really good for, um, I think, the Slanesh theme. You've got hedonistic, pleasure-loving, um, insane demons and they're all so full of themselves that they just can't get on. And in, in fact, they caused so much trouble for everybody else that um, they were sort of banished to this location and forced to work together, even though they don't. And this is reflected in the cards and in the special abilities of the characters themselves. So basically, they kind of get advantages when they annoy another member of their own warband, which is fantastic. So when someone else does badly that they have a particular beef against, they do better, which is, I think, quite a very fun little mechanic. Um, you've also got interesting cards in this deck that uh, there are temptation cards and gift cards, uh, and they always have some kind of good aspect and some bad aspect as well. So it actually reminded me a little bit of uh, the recent Picard deck that I reviewed for Star Trek Away missions, strangely enough. And there are similarities between these two games, so it's an appropriate analogy. So Picard is very into diplomacy. So he had a lot of cards where you uh, play a card and it gives your opponent an advantage, but it also gives you adva an advantage as well. And they kind of play off this kind of thing in this deck as well. So I suppose there's only so many ideas you can have for deck building games out there, but I think um, it works well in both thematic contexts. So that's uh, those guys and they've got a whole lot. They're quite powerful. Um, they have a lot of uh, interesting kind of special abilities, but also there's a bit of complexity to it as well. Um, I've played, when I first played with it, I found it sort of a little bit hard to get my head around straight away, but I think with repeated plays, you'll really get into the strategies of this particular warband and they're quite interesting. Uh, the other one is the Deep Kin or the Damp Elves, which I'm going to call them that from now on. Um, they are Serini's Razors. They're a little bit more straightforward. They're very powerful, but they're not very sturdy. So you have uh, Serini here, uh, who's the leader, and of course you've got this fantastic giant octopus. And who doesn't want a giant octopus in their gang? Very, very cool in indeed. Um, now, I would go into more detail about these cards, but I haven't played it enough yet, and that's only because I'm just flat chat with lots of other games, and uh, I've you know, given this a whirl and I enjoyed it. But Warhammer Underworlds is a game about playing over and over and enjoying and getting to know the strategies of your deck. And I haven't played it enough to give you good advice on that. I can only say that this is a very nice looking set. They haven't changed too much with this uh, this uh, season. They've added a few tweaks. There's a new stun action, which allows you to stun your opponents. 
and um, allow you to get in stronger attacks once they're stunned. Uh, leading on from that, there's also a barge super action, which allows you to make a move followed by a stun. So that shakes things up a little bit as well. But on the whole, it's still the uh, very successful Warhammer Underworlds um, formula, which mixes uh, a small miniatures game with small warbands with a deck building element and lots of interesting card play. So I enjoy it. Um, it's not something that I am desperate to play all the time. It tends to be a bit of a filler for me. Um, though it's probably more than a filler because each game will take a bit longer than usually than the usual filler length. Um, and again, the problem I find with it is that because I don't devote a lot of time to the game, that I don't enjoy it as much as I would if I did. So when I do get it out and say, oh, let's play Warhammer Underworlds, I find that I'm just sort of skating the surface of the game. Um, and then I don't rush back into it straight away and learn it because I'm onto something else. This is the problem with sort of being a bit of a, a gaming butterfly. But if you want to give it a little bit more time and get to know the decks, then I think you're going to um, uh, get a lot more out of it. And uh, certainly the great thing about it is that unlike a lot of Games Workshop games, each of these seasons is relatively self-contained. You've got um, enough decks and options to keep you busy. You've got two warbands. Um, you've got everything you need, all the bits and pieces. So you can enjoy the game for quite a while and you don't have to buy anything extra which I think is really cool. So there you go, a quick look at uh, Warhammer Underworld's Death Gorge. If you're into the game, definitely give it a look because the models are very, very cool. And I think the uh, teams are quite interesting. I think particularly that the Thricefold Discord are particularly interesting out of the two. Thanks very much for watching, everybody. This is Peter, the Esoteric Order of Gamers. Please check out all my social media stuff and, of course, the website. In fact, I've got a rules summary and reference for Warhammer Underworlds. I haven't updated it for this particular season, but it's a sort of general overview that I think you'll find very handy for the previous seasons. Um, if I have time, I'll get around to updating it for this one. I'll see you next time. Good gaming, everybody. Bye for now.